So as I said, my name is Ridwan Mullah. I'll be taking you through tonight's webinar. We're going to be talking about investing and trading offshore, but how to do it without having to actually physically go offshore. It's become obviously a very, very important and heavy topic of, of late. A lot of people have been wanting to know how best to do it. What can they do? How do they get their money offshore? And how do they get exposure to all these big, big shares like Apple and the likes? And it's one of the reasons why we actually decided to do this webinar. We've had a lot of clients asking us this question and how they can actually invest and trade offshore, but without physically actually taking their money offshore. Okay. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a few of those points. We're going to discuss it. We're going to go through how you get offshore investing through ETNs, through ETFs. We're going to discuss a bit about currency hedging uh, and costs. Also, if I go direct versus just using your local stockbrokers. We're also going to talk about offshore trading, how CFD shares work, indices, and a little bit on currency pairs. We're not going to dive much into the usual FX market but we are gonna discuss it as well, okay? So the first thing is what exactly is the reason that people have this interest with regards to offshore? So this year, and I'm sure many of us have seen it, some of us may have seen it in dollar terms, some of us may have seen it in RAND terms. This year is in RAND terms, the graph over here. And what it shows you is the actual growth in percentage for the last 10 years with regards to the S&P 500 compared to the JSE top 40 index, not the all share, the top 40 index. And as you can see, it has really and truly done exceptionally well. So, excuse me, the percentage growth in RAND terms has been obviously taken into account, the exchange rate and so forth. Remember the S&P is obviously in dollars, and converting that to rands, depending on how the currency is also moved, it's obviously impacted and given it even that extra boost, as one would say. So the S&P, as you can see in growth terms, South African rand terms most certainly has outperformed the top 40 index. However, having said that, in US dollar terms this year, last I checked, the all share index had outperformed any other index around the world. So that's what you got to remember and take into account is that the difference there is obviously impacted by the different measurements of currency, dollars and rand and so forth. But ultimately, if we just look at it from a percentage growth point of view, not taking into account any currencies or anything or any dollar or rand return, just percentage growth, you can actually see that the S&P though has still outperformed the all share index and it's outperformed it obviously by roughly about 50%. So it's been quite a big difference. Both however, have still given over the long term, very, very good growth. And your returns have obviously been exceptionally good. Please note though, that right at the bottom, it says there no costs have been considered. And what we mean by that is, this is just pure growth not taking into account any costs that you would have to incur in order to invest in these indices. It is just purely how the indices have grown. And obviously it's not taken any costs into account with regards to changing of currency. So RAND to dollars and so forth. Okay. But just looking at this, I mean, we can pretty much see there is this thing where everybody wants to get a bit of offshore exposure. And for me, it is exceptionally important to have that diversification. Yes, you wanna have local investments, but you also need to have that offshore investment as well. It just gives your entire portfolio a massive diversification boost, reduces your risk, and it also helps with regards to its growth as well. Okay. Just before we go into it though, what exactly is an ETF and an ETN? Well, ETFs, I mean, we've spoken a lot about it and you can read up quite a bit from, on our website, but ultimately an ETF is a pool of assets such as shares, bonds, currencies, commodities, but it tracks even a share index. An ETF, ultimately, the big difference between an ETF and an ETN, yes, they both track something. However, it is the way that it is hedged and the way the regulations are around each one. An ETF, without fail, will hedge directly. 
uh, an ETN may not do that. So an ETN is literally almost, it behaves more like, as we say, a bond. It is almost like a debt instrument. And that is the big difference between the two. However, having said that, they still very well regulated, both of them. An ETF and an ETN is well regulated by the JSE. And it does mean that you are very well protected when you invest in these instruments. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the usual fangs. And I've always used to ask this question, even to a very nice colleague of mine. Some of you might know Simon. Why do we call it fang when in actual fact, there is no share listed as Google? It's actually listed as Alphabet. But ultimately, obviously, Alphabet owns Google. And therefore, I guess that's the reason why the G is there. So it should actually be F-A-A-N-A, -A -A, potentially. But in any case, it says G. So it's part of the fan groups. So who are these people? Well, it's obviously Facebook. It's Apple. It's Amazon. It's Netflix. And obviously, Google. And if you don't know who these companies are, yeah, I guess that means you've just landed on the planet very recently. And even so, I'm sure they must probably found you and discovered you. So you might definitely know at least one of them, even if you're from another planet. That is how big these companies are. We all know Facebook, Apple, we know Amazon. Um, we know that Netflix and the likes have all become exceptionally massive companies. And I mean, this has just been the growth that they've experienced from January 20. You know, it is just amazing how these companies keep growing. And they are doing phenomenally well. They are in spaces which are amazing. A lot of people, when it comes to, for example, Apple, a lot of people want to invest in Apple pretty much around about now because of the fact that there's a very good chance, obviously, Apple is going to be launching their new iPhone. Um, they do it every single year in September. And obviously, depending on what that new iPhone brings, it could obviously boost their sales tremendously. And that obviously gives a very nice boost to the share price as well. So those are the type of things that people obviously are interested in. Our cell phone markets with Apple, Amazon, well, they sell everything. I mean, they sell anything and everything from a book right through to a computer, through to a stylus. Last I even checked, they even sell you now taps and everything else. So you can get anything from Amazon. Netflix, obviously, well, Netflix is TV. Us sitting at home and especially during the pandemic, we've seen Netflix grow tremendously. Their subscription base has increased at a rate that could never have ever been forecast. Um, it is It has just grown amazingly well. Obviously, Facebook, well, Facebook's been having a lot of issues, we know, over the last few years. But having said that, I mean, it has still grown very, very well. Um, it's not grown, obviously, as well as what it's previously done. But nevertheless, it has increased. I mean, compared to the rest of the fangs, it's not one of the outperforming one, if I can put it that way. But it's still doing very, very well. Okay. So those are the companies there that we know. And these are the companies that are offshore, massive companies. The problem is that we would love to obviously invest in these companies. I mean, one of the other companies as well, which I haven't yet put up on there, for example, Microsoft, Tesla, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, all very, very, very big companies. I mean, Tesla literally, their share price grew more than a thousand percent and they've been doing exceptionally well. Uh, until its owner, and I won't say his name right now, unless his owner says something again on Twitter, then maybe that share price will plummet again. But anyway, we'll just leave him to be. But the thing is, is that in order for us to get exposure to these shares, it can be difficult. And it is also can be very, very expensive. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's just take a, a simple example. Um, you know, we can look at, for example, Apple. So what exactly is Apple's share price? Apple's share price currently is around about 150 US dollars. Now, remember, you've got to multiply that by just over 14 to get it to the rand term. Now, that means I've got to have a lot of money still to, just to get one share. I mean, it's almost costing me the same as a NASPA share almost. But it is a very expensive share, number one. So trying to just buy and invest in these shares and to get good exposure to it is very, very difficult. And that's where ETNs have come in to play. 
So one of the ETNs that were actually launched last year, and it was done by FNB and RMB in joint venture. And what they started doing is they said, well, let's see how we can give South Africans here, South Africans exposure to the growth of these shares. And without them impacting the, obviously the offshore allowance, but also making sure that they can get access to these things at a very good price. So not having to spend 2,000, 3,000, or in Tesla's case, you know, 7, 10,000 Rand, whatever the case may be for just one share. So what they did is they created these ETNs and these ETNs actually track the performance of the underlying share. So what we mean by that is, what it will do is it will look at, for example, Amazon. And if Amazon is growing by a certain amount, obviously then your ETN will be growing by that as well. So it's tracking it and it's giving you exposure to that price movement, which is really great. So if, for example, I were to have an ETN in Apple and Apple were to go up by 50% or 100%, my ETN would do the same. They then did something which was actually very, very great. They then said to the ETN, well, you know what, for each one of these, we're gonna create two different types of ETN. We're gonna create the Q. So for example, if you look here, it says alphabet dash C and alphabet dash Q. And what they said is the Q means that the ETN will provide exposure to the company without currency risk. The C, provides exposure to the company with currency risk. So that means you are pretty much exposed with Alphabet, which is ultimately Google, you're actually exposed to the currency risk of the dollar versus the rand. The other one takes away the currency risk. Now, for people like myself, I and if I feel, for example, that, you know what, I don't think that the rand is going to stay at 14 and it's going to go up to 20, well, then I would rather buy the C because that means then that I get the currency risk and I also get the benefit of that as well. However, if you're somebody who believes that at 14 Rand to the dollar, well, you know what? Actually, I think it's gonna come down to 10. Then what I would say to you is then rather take the Q because you're gonna lose out otherwise with that exposure. Okay. But with Think Markets, we've got all of these listed on our, on our account. So if you have an equities account with us or a share account as it's called, you can buy any one of these products through us. You can therefore get exposure to Alphabet, which is ultimately Google, Amazon, Apple, Coca-Cola, Facebook. You can get McDonald's, you can get Microsoft, you can get Netflix, you can even get Tesla. You can even get access to the iShares core MSCI world ETF. And we'll talk about those indices one shortly. But the point here is, is that for the first time, you're now able to get exposure to directly into that share. You don't have to buy an ETF like an S&P 500 and then get a certain percentage exposure to it. You are able to right now get exposure in RANDs to any of these investment opportunities right now. Alphabet, like I said, Apple, there's Coke, there's Microsoft even, and so forth. So. These are big, large companies. We know that they do very well. They can perform exceptionally well, and they can grow very, very well. You want to get the offshore exposure. This is one of the best ways to do it. If you're going to go the other route, and I'll talk about it towards uh, shortly, the costs can get very, very, very high. No matter which broker you're using, whether it be somebody who is a low-cost broker right through to your bank, it's going to get expensive. There are certain people that are coming out, and I won't lie to you, Think Markets is one of them. We are looking at ways to actually give you the opportunity to buy in these type of shares directly, but that is coming, and that will come pretty much by next year, hopefully, okay, in the first quarter. But until then, you only have this route to go. You don't have to worry about your offshore exposure. You don't have to worry about any of these type of things. You just need to make sure now that you're getting the exposure to offshore shares. Okay, and you can do it directly. These are the best companies right now around. We all know them very well, like I said. And if you really and truly believe that these share prices are gonna be jumping, 
go for it. This is the best way to do it. You're getting full exposure to them, okay? Now, the big thing is, is that if I wanted to buy these things and go offshore, as I said, the big problem comes in is cost. So to give you an example, if you buy any of those shares that we just spoke about right now, sorry, any of those ETNs, Microsoft or Coca-Cola or Tesla, your cost is pretty much exactly the same as if you are buying a share through Think Markets. It's 0.25%, minimum 30 Rand. And obviously, that is it. You don't have to worry about exchange rate fees, exchange rates, and all of these type of things. If you were to go offshore, so you used any broker in South Africa right now to get offshore exposure and buy the shares directly, what you're going to be ending up and what you have to then take into account is all the different fees. You've got what we call your broker fees, and then you've also got your bank fees. So the broker fees, would have, they charge obviously brokerage and the likes, the, or commission maybe. They'll charge you clearing fees. They charge you custody fees. And then some of the brokers also on top of that charge you spread fees. So what do we mean by spread fees? Well, you're not going to get a live price, obviously. And when you buy that share, if the share is, let's say, $700, you'll pay $702 or $703 or even maybe $710. That is the markup that they do. They do a spread fee markup. So in actual fact, you're paying more than what you should. And that's where they make their money. They pretty much, if they sell it to you for $710, like in Tesla, for example, you would be pretty much paying them $10. The next thing then to take into account is the banking fees. So firstly, you got to, in order to invest offshore, you obviously have to take it from rands. You've got to convert it to dollars, pounds, or euros. And you've got to take that money offshore. Now, when you do that transfer, you've got to, obviously, you're going to get an exchange rate from your bank. Your bank will charge you a commission fee on that as well. Your bank will also give you a exchange rate with a spread in it. So the exchange rate, they're getting it at 14 Rand 50. They'll give it to you at 14 Rand 60. So they make another 10 cents there as well. And on top of that, they'll charge you commission or admin fees as well. Now, why am I talking so much here about fees is because these things are very important because remember, you've got to take into account all these fees and then divide it by your investment amount to get your cost of an investment in percentage. And that is because then you can know, so if you're investing $100 and it's just cost you $10 to do that investment, well, that pretty much means it's got to grow by 10% just to cover that cost of $10. So it's very, very important. And this is the reason why you're finding more and more people are making use of ETNs and even ETFs rather to actually get that offshore exposure. It is way cheaper. It is costing you much, much less. And on top of that, you are still getting the same exposure without having any impact to your offshore allowance. Okay. And just remember your offshore allowance, you're only allowed to take a million rand offshore per annum. And if you need more, you obviously have to go and get your clearance and everything else. Okay. So with that said and done, how easy is it then to actually then buy it here locally? So again, with, I mean, obviously Think Markets gives you full access to this. And it's actually as simple as can be. From the app, literally once you've logged in, you can obviously create your watch list, add them to your watch list. But to find these things are so simple. Hit the search button, top right hand corner, and type in a name. You don't have to click on ETF or ETN headings, just leave it under all, and just type in either Amazon, type in Google, type in Apple, Netflix, whatever you want to. It'll find it for you. There's the two options. If I typed in Amazon, for example, there's the share code. And then I've got, obviously, you look at it, it says Amazon C and Amazon Q. Choose whichever one that you want to invest in, depending, like I said, if you want to be impacted by, exchange, by the exchange rate or not. And once you've done that, you can either hit the trade button or add the, or that I with the plus, and that will add it to your watch list so you can monitor it thereafter as well. That is how simple it is. All you're doing is you're transferring your ZAR into it. Your cost, yet again, is 0.25%, minimum 30 Rand. It is way, way cheaper. And now you've got exposure directly to these shares. 
They're brilliant. They're tracking exactly what it does. And as you can see over there, those were the price movements on the day that I took these screenshots. It's actually been doing still quite well, so not too shabby. The next thing then is, the other option is getting offshore exposure, but doing it directly in the indices. So the index that we looked at earlier was the S&P 500 in the first slide. And as you can see, that index obviously has done phenomenally well. It's outgrown, obviously, most indexes around the world. And something very interesting. So our wonderful, well, I know Simon loves him, Warren Buffett, during his Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway Company's annual meeting, he yet again, and this isn't the first time he has said it, he has said this many a times as well. When asked what is his favorite investment, he said, I recommend the S&P 500 index fund. And like he said, and have for a long time to people. Now, he, this is a person who is running, obviously, a very large company listed on the stock exchange. And yet he's saying, don't invest in us. If you really and truly want to invest, invest rather in an S&P 500 index. And the reason for that is because upon his death, like he said, 90% of the money he leaves his wife will go into an S&P 500 fund. Obviously, that's after he donates to charity. Uh, if anybody on this call's name is Charity, just let me know. We can obviously talk afterwards. Hopefully, he's donating it to you. But ultimately, the S&P 500 index is tracking the largest 500 companies in the US. Despite the pandemic, the S&P 500 surged 16% in 2020, and it's been hitting, obviously, new highs in 2021. It's come off a bit, those highs, but it has still given fantastic returns. It, is amazing. it does amazingly well. But remember, this gives you 500 different companies, exposure to five different, different companies in the US. If you're starting out your investment, and this is the first time you're looking at investing offshore, this is one of the best ways to start. Take your money, put it into an S&P 500 index. You can buy it locally in RAND. So again, it doesn't impact your offshore allowance or anything else. The market makers themselves, they go and hedge and buy the individual shares so that you are exposed correctly and it is regulated. Start out there. That should be your first starting point. Buy some index trackers, S&P 500s. Once you've done that, you can then definitely go into the different shares. You can then go into the, the apples and the likes and you can take on more risk there. Okay. But here's a man who has said that over and over and over and over again. Do it. If people had listened to this presentation, which I did many, many, many years ago, which I think right now is actually more than 10 years ago, when we actually did a presentation where he spoke about it for the first time, and, we act, and I said to people buy that, you would be actually shocked as to how much your investment would have grown by now, okay? I see there is somebody that has raised a hand. If you do have any questions, please do me a favor, just put it in the Q&A section and I will definitely try to get to it either during the presentation, but most certainly at the end of this presentation. Okay. All right, so let's do that there. Okay. So as I just said, so if you have any questions, uh, no need to raise your hand or anything else, just do me a favor, please. Just put it into your questions. If you have any comments or if you can't hear me or anything else, just again, put it in the Q&A session and just let me know, All right? Okay, <clears throat> so how do we buy the S&P 500? So the one nice thing is, is that yet again, you've got full access obviously from Think Markets. You can buy into one of my favorites, the core shares S&P 500. I like it because it's got a very low TER. It is one of those that are tracking those shares. It's also got a very good weighting in it. The one thing just to remember always is that you have an S&P 500 and then you've got the MSCI. The MSCI World Index includes more than 1,500 large and mid cap companies from 23 developed countries. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 contains the top 500 large cap companies from the USA. So just remember when you're looking at these things, there is a difference between an MSCI and obviously an S&P. Like I said, for me, the S&P has been one of the better ones. I like it. 
I think the US has been doing phenomenally well, and it has so for quite a few for quite a few years, especially the large tech, uh, large technology companies. And my S and P 500 has been growing very very nicely every single year, without fail. So, <clears throat> good starting point again to buy it or to find it. Just hit that search button in the top right hand on the app with Think Markets, and you can buy it. The nice thing also of ETFs, by the way, you do not pay any STT. So STT is a fee, which is the Securities Transfer Tax fee. We don't make any money from that. That gets paid through its tax. There's 0.25% that is charged on it. The nice thing of ETFs is there is no STT on it. So your brokerage is literally your cost. It is 0.25%, as I said, minimum 30 Rand, and you're literally able to buy them. Just hit the search button, type in S&P 500 or type in MSCI if you're looking for maybe something like that, and you'll be able to find it immediately. You can again just trade or invest in it, or you can track it, add it to your watch list and track it, okay? But these ind indexes are a great place to start, and anybody and everybody that I know that has been doing investing, including the people like the Simon Browns of the world and everything else, the first thing that I won't lie to you, that, my, that Simon actually taught me about investing many, and now we, I'm gonna give my age away, but more than 15 years ago, he said to me was, don't chase the share. First start your portfolio, your investment portfolio, and get yourselves some ETFs. Back then, they weren't as many as they are today. But yet, I did buy an ETF. And the first ETF, I believe it or not, I bought was actually Satrix 40. <clears throat> Scary thing is, I still hold that ETF. Today, though, you're getting much better balanced ETF, balanced weighted ETFs, and the likes. So you're not just exposed heavily to two, three shares. They are very well exposed. I mean, they're very well balanced and weighted nicely. So you're getting good exposure. <clears throat> and therefore, you're experiencing very good growth in ETFs. Before ETFs were just nice, little steady, slow growing sh uh, shares, sorry, or exchange rate of funds. Today, we're seeing some really, really amazing ETFs from them. We are going to be doing, in fact, a webinar in October where we're gonna be talking just about ETFs and obviously the importance of having them in your portfolio. But for today, with regards to getting your offshore exposure, two things, you wanna get the shares, you've got the ETNs. You wanna get the indices, you've got it as well. S&P 500s, you've got it all. It is available, every single one of these is available through, to you from Think Markets. And with the brokerage of 0.25%, you're not going to get better value. The other thing also is remember the big thing, which everybody asks me about, I won't lie, because they compare us to somebody else out there. The big difference between us and that other broker out there, which is pretty much charging the same brokerage, is that when you trade with us, you get a live price. And your order goes straight through to the exchange. It is not going through anything else. It goes directly to the exchange you get the price as is on the exchange at that time. So you can actually see what you're paying and what it's trading at. You get a full life price snapshot and you can even refresh it as well as need be. Okay, so the next question, which a lot of asked is, I want exposure to China. So what about China? How do I get exposure to China? How can I buy Tencent? How can I buy Alibaba? There's unfortunately only one way you can do this right now is buying it through something like Satrix MSCI China Feeder ETF. And that is actually one of the better ways to do it because it also gives you a bit more of a balanced view. Um, we all know that 10 cent right now, the other way to get it, if you really and truly want exposure to 10 cent only, um, well, buy some NASPERS or process shares. They pretty much own quite a bit in 10 cent, but that means you're only getting exposure to 10 cent. And as we've seen right now, what has happened with those two shares because of anything happening on 10 cent, it is so sensitive to it, it's plummeted. Now, the other thing of this is, so this has been tracking obviously the wonderful Chinese listed companies out there. So you've got Alibaba, 10 cents and everything else in there. But one thing that it does do is, is that, sorry, one thing that it has done, especially over the last year, as you can see from the graph there on the right, 
well, it's taken a bit of a hiding and it's dropped quite a bit. Now, for those of you that follow all our research, we just recently have given a something called Think Picks, which is going to be a monthly research report in which we will put in at about three to five shares, which we say that you should be looking at. We won't just do shares, we also will have ETFs. And in fact, one of the ETFs that we've recommended is Satrix MSCI China. And one of the things that Kia, who, who heads up our research team, he's seeing quite a lot of good potential with regards to this ETF. You're getting exposure to the Chinese market, number one. You're getting good exposure, but you're also not getting very, very, very overweighted exposure. 13% and 12%, I mean, yes, those two combined make up 25% of it, but it's not, for example, making up 50, 60% of it. So it's giving you a bit good exposure to the top biggest two and the most probably the, the most well-known, They, but you're still getting exposure to all the other smaller ones as well. Tomorrow, if one of those companies were to grow phenomenally, you're obviously going to benefit from it as well. But like I said, our research team, please have a look at it. You can go on the website, thinkmarkets.com, under market analysis, mark, and you can actually find all the research there and look, for, look out for something called Think Picks, which will give you exactly all the shares that we've looked at and researched and what we're thinking is something really good for you to invest in. And like I said, this is one of them. There's your exposure. And just to let everybody understand one piece when it comes to an ETF, when we talk about percentage of portfolio, that's the weighting. And what does that mean exactly? So ultimately for every 100 Rand that you invest in Satrix MSCI China, it means that 13 Rand of that 100 is exposed to Alibaba. So if Alibaba's share price were to jump very high, you'd obviously experience roughly that growth as well, but only 13% of it is exposed. So 13 Rand of every one Rand is ultimately invested in Alibaba, okay? Okay, so there's actually a very good question which I do want to answer right now. The question is, you mentioned to start with ETFs before shares. So how big should your ETF portfolio be before investing in individual shares? That unfortunately is something you have to do yourself. And that means you've got to sit down and work out your strategy. For me personally right now, I worked it out. I, my portfolio at this moment in time, my ETFs, are currently, and, and it's actually been that they've grown a bit better, but my ETFs right now actually take up just over 40% of my actual portfolio. Um, and 40%, what I mean by that is that's local and offshore e exposure ETFs are pretty much taking up 40% of my portfolio. Um, that, however, does have to do with the fact that I do have a certain share, which I have been starting to trim down on because that has ex did very, very well and is actually got to be heavy weighting in my portfolio. For me personally, I always say to anybody, if I had to put a RAND value down, let's say you're somebody who's investing only 2,000 RAND every single month, um, I would say to you, look, build it up for at least an, the next two years. Put your 2,000 RAND in for the next two years into ETFs, get that going, and then start looking at shares. Um, the nice thing is that that also gives you time to understand and learn shares and understand how investing works. If, however, you had a level of comfort where you understand the markets a lot better and you're happy to take on that risk of rather going directly into shares, then feel free, start there. But just if I could put it this way, for me personally, and again, I don't know your circumstances. Um, remember, it's up to you to decide it. But for me personally, I would always say if I had 2,000 Rand to put away, I'd look at potentially based on my age and risk profile, I'd look at 1,000 Rand in ETFs and then maybe 1,000 Rand in different shares as well. Okay. So with China out of the way, the big question is, how do I hedge? And what is hedging exactly? So ultimately hedging means that you almost add a null, it, it, any movement either way will not impact you. That's ultimately what hedging means. Now, when it comes to obviously investing offshore, if you're happy to take on the exposure risk, fantastic, because you believe that the RAND may go, like I said, from 14, 14.54, as it was when I took the screenshot. If it's gonna go from 14.54 to 20, 
then I'm happy to just not have any hedge in place. I'm happy for that there to happen. But if I think it's going to weaken, then obviously I need to rather put a hedge into place. Now, what exactly does this hedge do and why are we talking about this? So if you're going to hedge and you were to use, let's say, a currency pair or FX, in other words, a derivative, well, the big problem with that is, is that that small little fluctuation from 1454 to 1450 can end up causing you to be closed out and so forth. So you've got to be very, very careful of that. This hedging and the way of hedging with investment, uh, sorry, with ETNs, is actually a lot easier, safer, and there's no risk to it. I've actually used this product and I've actually spoken to many people about it. I've actually used it before, obviously pre-COVID, when we could travel overseas, I used to actually hedge myself with this. So I would say, look, I've got 10,000 Rand that I actually wanna convert into dollars and that's what we're gonna use for spending money, just argument's sake. What I would do is, I would look at the exchange rate and if I thought at 1554, the exchange rate is actually fantastic, you know what? I take the 10,000 Rand and I actually go and buy that ETN at 1454. Now, let's say in six months time, I'm ready to travel overseas. The hedge is there. And what that hedge means is, is that in six months time, let's say it's gone to 20 Rand to the dollar. That pretty much means I made six rand of profit on this ETN. For every ETN that I got for the 10,000 rand, I've pretty much made six rand worth of profit. So now when it comes time to go and exchange my physical rands for dollars at the bank, I literally go and I take my 20 rand, I go to the bank and I say, here's my 20 rand, they'll give me one US dollar. So I've hedged it and ultimately it means I only paid 14.54. The same apply, and you can do the USD, the Euro, and you can do the GBP as well. So it's really brilliant. It is actually called new Euro, new GBP. And the reason for the word new is because this is actually an ETN created by APSA. They, the market makers behind it, and you can actually then go and hedge yourself. They back it. And the nice thing of the price that you're seeing there, it's actually the wholesale rate. So it's a better price that you would obviously get at a bank or anywhere else, but it gives you a good hedge. Same would apply if you're investing and you're offshore and the likes, and you want to just take on a hedge because you think the, the exchange rate is good. This is one of the places you can do it. Obviously, yes, you can then still do it with an FX, but just remember with a CFD FX, you obviously need to make sure that you've got the right margin in there and you're monitoring that because your PL is daily on it. This is just going to move. If it goes from 1450 and it goes down to 10, well, that's fine. I made a loss, but it means ultimately I still paid 1454 when I go to the bank and exchange it. That is ultimately what hedging is. And this is the best instruments around if you're going to hedge. If you're going to be taking money offshore because you want to buy something offshore or you're investing in property offshore or anything else in that there, this is the best and easiest way to get a hedge in place while all the transactions and everything and signing of agreements and everything else is being done. You hedge yourself if you're happy with the exchange rate. And like I said, these ETNs, simple. The cost also is exceptionally low, yet again, 0.25%, minimum 30 rand. So you can actually do this very, very nicely. I, to this day, will again, obviously start using it. And I, like I said, I've always used it since the dates came out, I've always used it to hedge, especially for my for my holidays and the likes. If you're going overseas anywhere, I've hedged it, especially when I've seen a very good favorable rate. Okay. So the next thing is, how do we trade offshore? Um, just before we get to that, I've got one question here. What is your thoughts of the NASDAQ 100 ETF versus the S&P 500? That's a tough one. Um, they pretty much, I mean, your S&P 500 obviously is weight, its weighting is pretty much to the top 100 uh, tech companies listed on the NASDAQ because it is, those companies are the biggest. I mean, your fangs pretty much take up a lot of the weightings in the S&P 500 already because of the way they've grown. That said though, is that the nice thing of the 500, it's just given me a little bit more exposure to those other companies, which may not, which obviously are not as big as the fangs, but it's still giving me that, that exposure. So 
if you were looking at having a nice diversified ETF, then yes, S&P 500. If you just want it narrow and you really and truly just want it on only 100 tech companies, then go for the NASDAQ 100. That would be my, I mean, that would have, be what I would say you have to make your decision on. Okay. Uh, there's another question here, which I'll answer so long before we jump into the trading part. Uh, would you pay CGT when hedging currency with ETN? The answer to that is quite simple. I'm not a tax advisor. The one thing I will tell you is when you do make money, yes, you're going to pay tax at some point or the other. Whether it's going to be CGT or not, that's going to be totally dependent on you. Obviously, you can justify in the sense of, oh, no, I used it for hedging purposes and those type of things. So that I would just say is just speak to a tax practitioner, even speak to SARS. I mean, SARS can give you that, that advice as well. But just remember, when you're hedging, you don't know whether or not you're going to make a profit or you're going to make a loss um, because obviously you, you're just happy with that exchange rate. Okay. Next up, trading CFD shares. Now, this has been huge and becoming exceptionally popular. In fact, right now, when Think Markets started here in South Africa, uh, we obviously launched with first CFD shares offshore, and then we brought in the local CFD shares. And the scary thing is our CFD offshore trading has pretty much been always more than, more than triple in at some points than our local trading. And the reason for that is, for most people, they find good movement in the offshore shares in comparison to ours. Ours seem to be a bit more stable. So there's a little bit less volatility in the South African market than there is in the US markets. But CFD shares were here yeah, through think markets can be traded. You can trade Tesla, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix. You can even trade the S&P 500 index as well. You can trade the NASDAQ, you can trade the DAX, any of these indices. But the CFD shares, the nice thing is you can get it, get that exposure in RAND terms. Remember, you sitting in here with RANDs, you're buying it in dollars. We do the conversion for you straight away and, and we convert it back so that you get it back into RANDs as well. But remember, the nice thing here is, is that you're now getting exposure to trade all of these international shares, but your money does not leave the country. There's no offshore allowance. You don't need to convert your RANDs to dollars or do any of that. And the reason for that is because with the CFD share, we don't take your money offshore. The CFD share is also, remember, you don't own the share with the CFD. With the CFD, you're getting exposure. Margin on it is normally around about the 10% mark. Obviously, it's different for different shares. But again, you don't have to then put down the full amount. So if Tesla is 700 US dollars, you need to put down roughly equivalent of $70 to actually be able to get exposure to one share. We don't charge any commission or brokerage. So unlike other brokers who charge you commission plus a minimum brokerage fee, or they charge you commission fees, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. I mean, today I actually had a client who was speaking to me and telling me that he's getting charged 0.5% for trading in CFD shares. That's locally. Um, and I was, yeah, it's, it's actually quite shocking. But like I said, the nice thing here is there's zero commission on it. Your, and that's on both your local and offshore shares. You got zero impact to your offshore allowance with Think Markets because, like I said, we don't take your money offshore. And you're getting exposure and able to trade all of these things. So you can trade in the fangs. There's movement coming in Apple. You know that there's a very good chance for whatever reason the you've got some information or you, are, you think that when they launch the new Apple iPhone this month, you know what, that share price is gonna jump. You don't have enough cash, so rather instead of buying the actual share or the ETN, you'd wanna have direct exposure to it, take out the CFD Apple. Just remember, when you trade in CFDs, you need to really and truly understand trading. If you don't understand trading, please start and stick with investing. Here you have gearing, here you have leverage and so forth. And if you don't have any idea what I've just said, when I said gearing and leverage, stay away from CFD share trading. Start with your investing, grow your investment, and then start adding trading to it to complement your entire wealth creation. Okay. But as you can see, trading, 
offshore stocks, simple as can be. Zero impact to offshore allowance. In hedging, you can also, like we said earlier, you can hedge with currency pairs, FX trading. Just remember, like I said, this year is obviously very high leveraged instruments. I mean, the USD czar is leveraged at 250 to one. And that pretty much means that every 1000 USD that you're taking out, so every single contract that you take out, you're getting exposure to a thousand USD, sorry, with a thousand USD, you exposed to 250 thousand dollars so that equals two and a half lots so every lot gives you that that said and done you can obviously take out oh and by the way that reminds me with the cfd shares you can also do fractional cfd shares as well as with the index as well as with indices so you can take out 0 0.01 point, yeah, 0 0.01 uh, of a contract with regards to our cfd shares as well as our indices as well and you do have the ZAR 40 as well in there if you need to trade it. Currency pairs, as I said, this is, if you're gonna be doing hedging and using this to hedge, remember what that means. You take out one lot, remember what your exposure means. You can again, yet take out 0 0.01 of a lot as well, but just understand that you are leveraged 250 times ultimately. Your PNL is daily and this trades 24 seven. So please understand, and be careful of that, okay? But a lot of people love trading FX. This is a trillion dollar industry. People love it because of the gearing you get, the volatility you get. You can make a lot of money in a day, but you remember you can also lose a lot of money in a day, okay? And it is absolutely one of the, I won't lie to you, this is the highest demand around the world. We have, and I'm sure every single person was called, knows of FX brokers. Think markets. Yes, we have FX that you can trade, but we are not an FX broker in that sense. And I like to always make that very clear because of the reputation FX brokers have. Unfortunately, we always know that there's been a lot of FX brokers who have not done things exactly the way they should and have ended up with some serious problems. Um, you can obviously follow and find out a lot more about that on social medias and the likes. For me, I always say to people, if you want to do trade FX, please make sure you're trading it through a proper regulated broker, a broker that is ensuring that you're getting the right pricing, the right spreads and has the capital to back it. A lot of FX brokers work on the fact that they want you to make a loss. And when you make profits, then becomes a problem for them. With us, we hedge every single thing we do. So therefore it is perfectly fine and safe for you to trade with us in FX. That said though, remember, if you're gonna using, using FX to hedge, yes, you gotta be very careful of that because of the leverage on FX trading. For those FX traders out there, best of luck. I am not an FX trader, I won't lie to you, but I do dabble in it. Um, I do try my luck. I always say to people, I do try my luck at FX trading. As I'm not a person who really and truly follows technical analysis that in depth, it is one of the reasons why for me, FX trading, I stay a bit away from it, but I do dabble in it. I do want to obviously enhance and improve my knowledge in FX trading. And that's the reason why that I am in it as well. Okay. Um, there's a question here that just asks, uh, you've just answered my questions. It seems you can trade Forex and invest through think markets before the seminar. I thought it was just for trading. No, it's not. We do investing and trading. You can open a shares account and you can open a CFD account. You obviously, when you just start the application process, choose one of them. Once that is, once your FICA or KYC is completed and the account is activated, you can then add your CFD account or vice versa as well. And then you obviously don't need to submit any FICA again for that, we'll activate the account. We do obviously need to capture all your details again because the one is for an exchange and the other one is obviously for a derivative platform. Okay. Uh, investing and trading, obviously you can do that, sorry, investing, you can only do through the Think Trader app. And if you want to do trading, you've got the option of using ThinkTrader. You've got the option of also using an MT4 and MT5 platform. My personal favorite, 
I won't lie to you, think trader. I've never been a big fan of MT4 or MT5. Okay. But just to close, and we can then go into any more questions that, that you may have. Please remember when it comes to investing your fees, fees really and truly, and in fact, even in trading, it is actually scary as to how much fees eat away. For those traders out there, I always tell, I never ever put another brokerage firm down, but I always say to them, please do me one favor. When it comes to trading, look at the spreads, especially if you're in FX. FX trading, see what the spreads are like. A lot of our brokers increase and you know continuously play around with that spreads, trying to make more money and the likes. With us, we don't. Our spreads, our spread is our spread. That is it. And it's one of the tightest in the market. You can compare it to anyone out there, all the biggest guys out there. It is exceptionally tight. The other thing that we've noticed is that there's a lot of people out there that have suddenly launched and uh, I won't mention who they are, but they all seem to be coming up with this new thing called zero accounts. I think Marcus always tells you that there is zero brokerage, there is zero commission. Zero accounts, just watch for those asterisks. Uh, the asterisk normally has, hides the fees. Zero accounts are never ever zero. Uh, with most people out there in South Africa, like I say, they always put an asterisk next to it. And that hides the fees. We have an asterisk on ours where we say low brokerage fee of just 0.25%. And the reason for that terms and conditions applied to that is purely because it's 0.25% minimum 30 Rand. We have no monthly fee at this moment in time on our investment accounts, as well as on our trading accounts. I don't charge withdrawal fees. I do not charge admin fees. I do not charge any of those things. You come in, you investing and you are trading and that is it. It is not about the fees for us. It is about making sure that people can get access to the right platforms. And a very good question that was asked to me once before was, that's fantastic. How do you guys make your money? And I'll tell you right now on our CFD shares, we do make money on the CFD shares. We do not add a markup on our pricing or anything else. You get live prices, by the way, on CFD shares, live from the exchange. However, we do charge an overnight funding rate. It's one of the most competitive. And in fact, I think we're still the cheapest, but we charge Jibar plus minus 2% on our CFD shares. And that's ultimately where we make our money. The big difference is I do not have to pay a large staff. I do not have high costs. So I don't have massive bonuses and all of these things to pay. No offense to anybody out there, but that is ultimately it. And that's how we're able to keep the cost so low. Okay. But please, this is very important. Watch your fees. Remember going directly offshore involves a lot of costs. So be very careful of that. Know the costs, understand them. And don't just look at the cost of what is the brokerage or the commission. Look at all the costs. You've got banking fees and everything else involved as well. And look at brokers that offer you value. Brokers, you know, it's one of the things that have been always hidden from clients and the likes. When you go and you buy shares with certain very low cost platforms, you know, it's it's very easy to do with our plat with all the platforms, and no pun on the word easy, but it is it is very good. I mean, there's brokers out there who are giving phenomenal access, but just watch for those that are hiding things. For example, there's no live price. Maybe that's because you're not actually getting it at a certain price and they're marking it up. So you got to watch out for those type of things and be careful of those costs. Okay. So yes, I put up this here just by the way for everybody on this thing. Yes, I am a massive Liverpool supporter. So is my son who's a soccer player, an avid soccer player as well. And think markets went ahead and actually managed to get it. A, the sponsorship with Liverpool, they are the, we are now the official global trading partner of Liverpool. So I was exceptionally excited when I heard that. This partnership, just by the way, I always tell people, it's not about the fact that we, that I'm a Liverpool fan, therefore think markets did it or think markets is a Liverpool fan. The reason that this partnership actually came about was when we spoke to quite a few different uh, types of clubs and helping to sponsor them and to partner with them. It's not even a sponsorship. This was the one club that actually took us through an entire interview process because they wanted to know about our legacy, our heritage. They wanted to know what is our business plans. Um, you know, they, they, they look at, believe it or not, they actually look to see whether or not your business is 
going to be around for the next 10 years? And how long have you been around for? And that was actually the most amazing thing. And it was one of the reasons why we actually said, yes, we're going to go for this. And we actually went and we went and we fought very hard. And there was a lot of other people around us as well that tried to do this. And we got it. So we're very, very proud of it. Um, and it just shows from Think Markets as a brand that there's great longevity in it. There's also a massive heritage in this brand as well. I mean, we've been around for more than a decade. The scary thing is the staff members here in South Africa, as well as around the world, their knowledge and their actual expertise is phenomenal. Okay. So we also here to shake up the think uh, the local South African market like Liverpool just did by shaking up finally the Premier League. Um, we are definitely here to shake this market up here in South Africa and to get rid of those exceptionally, you know, the usual bankers, as I would say, bankers running trading platforms and charging a hell of a lot of fees. Okay. But with that, that's my, my spiel for today. Please, if you have any questions, please pop them into the question section on Zoom. You can just type it in there and I will then answer any questions that you may have right now. Um, not a question, but a note. I think your approach is great and the way you explain complicated topics in plain English kept me captivated for the whole duration. I'm hooked. I'll be opening an account tonight. Thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate that. Um, we, yes, we try to keep it simple. It's not about complicated. I mean, investing should never be something complicated. And when you're starting out with investing, it should never ever be something complicated. But having said that, always remember there is something to learn. I've been in this industry for more than, I always say more than 15 years. And I still to this day learn something new every day. I mean, this year alone, I've spent a lot more time starting to do, like I said earlier, dabble in FX trading and the likes, but it was about diversifying what I know. And if you're starting your journey tonight, I'm really glad to hear that. Open the account. If you're starting, this is the very first time you're up. Open a share account. And then obviously you can move on to trading as well. Okay. Right. We're almost at the end. Are there any more questions? I'm going to give it another few seconds just before we hit seven o'clock. Uh, to see if anybody has anything that they want to ask. Uh, this question here is the, is the share account and trading account the same? No, we keep your, your share account is for investing. That is for your ETFs, your ETNs, as well as your normal JSC listed shares. Your trading account, which is a CFD account, is different. You can transfer from your share account money to your CFD account if you want to. All right. However, they are completely separate to keep your money separate as well. And the reason for that is unlike some, some brokers out there which offer the pro both the products, many times what they do is they combine that from a margin point of view. But the big problem is that when you get closed out on a trading side, if you're trading in CFDs, you can actually end up having your investments closed out as well. So we keep it completely separate, your investment portfolio, as well as your CFD portfolio. However, it, it is all under one username. So you create one email address, which is your username with your password. And then you can obviously add a share account or you can add a CFD account and you can add multiple accounts as well. If you need to add any multiple accounts or you want to add, you've opened a share account or a CFD account, you want to add the other one, you're not sure how to, please feel free to just go onto our live chat, just ask them how to do it. But alternatively, you can log into our client portal, which is available on the website, thinkmarkets.com, and you can add the account there. Alternatively, from the Think Trader app, it is actually very, very simple on the app. You can just go to more. Once you've logged in on the bottom right, you just go to more. And you can obviously then go to accounts and add the accounts there. If you haven't got an account, download the Think Trader app. You can actually open it from there as well. Okay. Oh, that's a very nice comment that I've got there. Ridwan issuing a warning to aspirant CFT traders. <laughs> uh, any investor, uh, 
that's a, that's a very lovely statement. Uh, Wandile, thank you very much for that one. Um, just a list of all accounts offered again. Uh, Adil, like I just said, you've got a share account, which is for your local JSE listed exchange traded funds, exchange traded notes, as well as for shares listed on the JSE. And then you've got the CFD account. And that CFD account is for all CFD instruments. You can trade in CFD shares locally, as well as CFDs offshore. You can trade in FX, you can trade in CFD Bitcoin cryptocurrencies, you can trade in CFD futures even, you can trade in virtually any single instrument you can think of, it's actually there, okay? You can trade in CFD gold, platinum, so the commodities are there, everything, but that's a CFD account, okay? Uh, you don't have to exchange into dollars first to trade FANG or other USD stocks, no you don't. If you wanna trade, if you wanna take a CFD out, you can, open up a czar account with us you can buy the we obviously take we convert your rands to dollars there's no fee for converting rands to dollars when you're trading because we physically do not convert your 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 rands it is merely so that we can say okay do you have enough margin for it so you can actually trade in any of those stocks usd stocks you can trade in european cfd shares and the likes if you're going to be trade, if you're going to be investing, and you're going to be investing, obviously in ETNs and that, obviously that is all in ZAR. It is listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Those are all in ZAR. Okay. Do you receive the dividends when trading CFDs? Where can I see that in my account? Many thanks. Um, Alrich, you receive all dividends, obviously depending on the dividend. Remember, it's not a normal dividend when it comes to CFDs because you don't actually own the share. It's what we call a manufactured dividend, and that is paid into your account after LDT. It normally takes place one to two days after LDT and that gets paid directly into your account and you'll see it come through as a cash payment into the account, your trading account that is. Okay. Uh, thanks and love the travel vacation analogy for having. Yeah, trust me. Um, I'm just waiting to be able to travel. I won't lie to you, ever since uh, Think Markets uh, did the sponsorship with Liverpool, the first thing I told my boss is, if the sponsorship does not come with a free ticket for me to watch a game at Anfield, then I am personally going to actually object to the sponsorship. So I'm hoping for that ticket one day. And as soon as it does, I'll be the first one to hedge. I think it's actually right now at a good rate. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank everybody for attending and thank you for all your comments, your questions and the likes. And I'd just like to urge every single one of you, please do me a favor. Go ahead. You can, like I said, tonight, you can download it from the App Store right now. Just go into your App Store. You go into your Google Play Store, download an app, open your share account. We will make sure if you submit all the FICA documents and that there, and you can take the pictures of it from your phone so you can upload it immediately. Submit it through to us. We'll have your account open. I mean, we aim to open those accounts within 12 hours so long as we have all the documentation, or in fact, your account might just get e-verified. And by e-verified is we do the validation and checks automatically. And that way your account might be open already uh, literally after 10 minutes. Um, if you get that through, get your account open, get your money in. If you have a share account, you can only transfer money via an EFT, which is an electronic funds transfer or bank wire as it says. It'll give you the banking details on the app, we bank with Standard Bank. So if you don't bank with Standard Bank, obviously remember it can take two to three days. That's for shares. Your bank account for your CFDs is a different bank account. And for CFD trading, because we know how important it is for traders to get their money in ASAP immediately, we do offer OZO where you can do an EFT. And I recommend you use OZO. Alternatively, obviously you can use your cards as in your debit cards and the likes. For me, first choice, always use OZO because the money comes up. You can then choose which account the money comes from and it's instant as well, okay? It is a secured provider. OZO is actually used by Mr. D, believe it or not, Macro and the likes. They all use it, okay? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. If you need any more information, please feel free to reach out to any of our staff. The South African team is available from 8.30 right through to five o'clock every single day. Alternatively, we do have all our staff from around the world which cover us so that you get 24-7 access to customer service. 
But with that, thank you very, very much. And please keep safe, be safe, and hopefully we'll be able to see each other one day in face-to-face. -face. Thank you and goodbye.